Welcome back, everybody, to NFL Head Coach 09 with the Atlanta Falcons and Head Coach Harley Jean Charles. We're three years in now, and we're coming off easily the best season of the series. We've come a long way from the 1 in 15 year with the Dolphins. We immediately get fired and go to the Atlanta Falcons, who had a better roster, and we didn't do too well in year one, but in year two, we put together a really solid season. 11 victories here, 8 losses. We ended up going 9 and 7 on the season, made the playoffs, won our first two playoff games. It was all around a success, but at the same time, I think we all came away feeling disappointed with certain areas of the team. And obviously, at quarterback, we have not had the best play, and that was supposed to be something we could probably trust coming to the Atlanta Falcons. Like, having Matt Ryan very young in his career was a big draw in coming to Atlanta in the first place. Matt Ryan is now a few years into his career at 86 overall, and you would think that, okay, we're not going to worry about that position for a very long time, but... When we've gone through games, we have not seen a very consistent quarterback, and Ryan has made way too many mistakes for us to just trust him going forward. I think he's improved, but not enough in two years of us coaching him on this team. This season, we had far too many games thrown away, and there were so many games that we should have won, and I think we should have at least made it to the Super Bowl. I know we had all around a successful year, but there was so much more we could have done. I don't think any of us believe that the quarterback of the future for this team is on the roster. Matt Ryan has simply not been very good, and we don't know enough about Ryan Gordon or Wade Appling, but we did see Appling play. He did start and play an entire playoff game, but we haven't seen anything from him that suggests he would be the quarterback that we have been needing. Maybe he has that potential, though. There's one thing that makes this offseason tricky. How do we attack the quarterback position given the salary of Matt Ryan and the lack of a first-round pick? I traded that to go and get Darrell Revis last year. It's similar to what the Bears did just a couple years ago with Khalil Mack. They had a young quarterback in Mitchell Trubisky they were very confident in. And then they made aggressive moves like the one to get Khalil Mack, and they gave up multiple first-round picks in the process. When Trubisky didn't continue playing at a good level, they were left without a first-round pick to address the position. And that's kind of where we're at right now with this team. Is there a chance for us to address quarterback in the draft? Possibly. Is free agency an option? We'll have to see about salary. But I do have kind of an idea of what we can do this offseason even if addressing quarterback is not uh, something we can do easily. I wasn't very familiar with head coach when I started this series, but I've learned some things now, and I think I have an idea of how we can get this team even better for next season. I think that one thing we could do is definitely bring in a quarterback that has playmaking ability outside the pocket. We need to get somebody on this team, I think, that can run some packages where we can utilize speed and different types of plays that add to the offense because simply just running our pro-style offense doesn't always work and sometimes we need something else. So this kind of goes with what I do in like my Kalispell Dynasty where I have my traditional offense, but then I have some packages where, all right, we're gonna run triple option. We're going to run Flexbone. We're going to do some different things when all else fails. I got to find the equivalent of that here in Head Coach. A lot of those same plays are in there, but I don't know if I can actually run like triple option or whatever. But I think we can figure something out. The other thing is making sure that our ground game is better. Because we have a very good offensive line. We have Jeremy Dahl, who's already a 92, Justin Blaylock, Sam Baker. It is a good line, and I can't believe that Chuck Castle didn't have a bigger season. I know he got some development this year, but he did not have the year I thought he would, especially as we can see the chronological game log that is not in the Modern Maddens. 
This is how he started his career. 83, touchdown, 61, touchdown, 195, two touchdowns. And then Michael Turner was hurt, and this is what we got. Almost nothing. Two, three yards a carry. Just no ground game depth there. We have to focus on that this offseason. And how do I plan on doing that? Big plays. Nine, six, seven, nine, six. We need running backs, at least one on this team, that we can count on to give us big plays on the ground. One thing I would like to try is moving wide receiver Xavier Short to running back. He has the elusiveness and the athleticism, but awareness is low, which I think is a pretty important rating in this game. And obviously, you wouldn't have all the uh, running back skills that you would uh, normally expect. He's not even a great receiver. He only has 60 catching. So I think I want to keep him on the team as a kick returner for sure, but I don't see him having a future at wideout. So we're going to try him now at running back. Well, that's not good. I mean, I can still try playing him at running back in certain spots. I can move him to quarterback. And I have actually lined him up there before just so he can run like quarterback sweeps. I guess I'm a little limited here in what I can do as far as editing goes. But anyway, we're going to get to the offseason today. And I'm not exactly sure how far we're going to get. I want to get as far as I can today in a good recording session, but the off seasons in here take a lot of time, so there's a chance we make it only through part of the off season. Regardless, we're going to make some moves and some progress, so let's get started today. All right, the owner wants us to keep offensive coordinator Brian Schottenheimer, and I am fine with that. Were we really first in points scored? And we still could have been so much better than we were? One thing we know we have to do this year is hire a better trainer. That was the first big mistake I made last year, and I didn't realize it right away. But that is why we had so many players on IR, and we we're constantly dealing with injuries. I think about how this team could have even been better if we just had Michael Turner healthy this season. He started out really strong. I know last year we were talking about, like, okay, should we release him? But it turned out that he was, you know pretty productive this season he had four yards a carry which isn't phenomenal but he did give us some really solid play and it was nice having him and castle together without turner we had one of the worst backfields in the league i like having continuity here i guess our stats as far as defense weren't that good but thomas is a 64 overall skill level coordinator with a lot of skill points to spend i don't want to make a lot of coaching changes that doesn't mean I don't want to make any, however. I think we might want to go and look at another quarterback coach. Because we might have to go with Matt Ryan for another year. Just because I don't know what we're going to be able to pull off this offseason. I think we're also going to look for a new running backs coach. Because we have only an 18 overall skill coach right now. And that position last year was just too weak. I want you to keep this staff member. I will be firing Dan Mifflin. And then we are going to fire Gerald Brown. And hopefully we can find some good upgrades here. I'm pretty good though with I think the rest of our coaches. Especially because a lot of them still have XP and can continue to get better. But especially for players that touch the football. You need good coaches with good performance. John Lynch. You want me to fire John Lynch? I may have to actually do that. Because I know our secondary last year did not live up to our lofty expectations. I forget what happened last year. If we had a DB coach that got uh, a coordinator job or something. But obviously Lynch has only been on our staff for a year. And I was not very happy with our secondary last season. We had... A lot of talent and not a lot of production there and maybe John Lynch needs to go we have fired John Lynch all right special teams we will keep Keith Armstrong wait you wanted me to fire or keep the trainer it does it actually keep track of those stats 
season games missed, season injuries. I need to see where it actually keeps track of that. That's so deep. I've played Madden for all these years. I'm not used to features this deep. You know, I play a lot of games where it's like, wow, if Madden went to this depth, I would never get off the game. I've been checking out like Fire Emblem Three Houses lately and some of the depth there, the managing of uh, different characters and all the control in depth. It's like, I want that here. I don't know if I can actually find the statistics there, like deeper with like rankings, but obviously it's keeping track of it somewhere and that is just so cool that you get that information. Yeah. We're obviously getting a new trainer. Our staff budget is about to double this year. Here is the season recap. The weekly breakdown, the individual leaders. I love this menu here. Chuck Castle, 11 touchdowns, 777 rushing yards. This stuff is really cool. It's just a super simple menu, but it's organized and you get the information you need quickly. We do have some skill points to spend here for our coaches. We're going to keep Brian Schottenheimer and upgrade performance now to its maximum for him. Four out of five. Alrighty, we got to start signing some new coaches here. And I can't exactly remember how this works. As far as like um, what our limit is for staff budget. But I know I want... A better quarterback coach and trainer and I guess uh, we won here I didn't actually place a bid or anything but I guess nobody else was interested Wayne Moses here running backs coach overall skill level 25 learning four intangibles five let's see here I don't know if anybody else is gonna join into this one either all right defensive backs coach we won again there are five teams involved. We're not even trying. All right, here we go. A chance to add a new trainer. Chris Johnson, 99 overall skill level. Wait. Did I not hit X fast enough? Fantastic job. All right, on to Ian Baker. He at least has 90. I guess I hit X like a split second too late. I will let you do whatever you want to the team, basically. I just want my running backs and everybody else to stay healthy. Injury playing status. I don't want to give up all that control. How about running back game health status? Um, let's go halfback game fatigue. I'm cool with that. Tight end. Linebacker. Just half the top Minnesota. And we won. All right. I don't know if I have to negotiate their salaries. I forgot. But here is the staff recap. New quarterbacks coach. Overall from 15 to 28. At running back, 18 to 25. At defensive back, it went down to 35. And then for trainer. From 25 to 90. By the way, the Indianapolis Colts were the team that won the Super Bowl. Let's go check that out if we can. 27-20. The Colts with Peyton Manning win their Super Bowl ring over the Rams. Could we have defeated this team? I don't know. I thought we could make it, though. I, I really thought this team had what it took, even though we... We're definitely flawed, but I hope that we can have a good shot this coming season. Hopefully we have a good off season here, but I know we're going to have some challenges. I made some moves to bring in veterans like Revis and Suggs. Salaries can become a problem. We'll just have to see. All right, draft preview. I think this is the same menu that we get earlier in the year, but this is supposed to be a four-star quarterback class, a four-star running back class, and a four-star receiver class. Offense as a whole is very good. Defense, extremely weak. Here's a look at our salary cap status. It looks like we are 16 million under the cap right now, so that's a good spot to be. But 41 million in potential incentives. 
Not sure if that's going to be a problem. A lot of the incentives are unlikely to be earned. Which I know in the real NFL, I think incentives are uh, weighed against the cap differently if they're likely to be earned or unlikely, and there's definitions for that. It gets super in-depth. I'm pretty sure like every NFL team has like a cap guy, just one person who focuses on the salary cap. Alright, we'll start out here. We have the franchise tag, and I really didn't think I would need to use this this season, but here is a way to look at all of our free agents. Terrell Suggs, Lavernius Coles, John Wellborn, and more players here down the list. We don't have a lot of players I was worried about re-signing. I don't know that I'm really going to bring back any of these players at all. We'll have to see. I could tag Prater, just because the special teams franchise tags are always pretty cheap. And I think I will do that. A couple million dollars there. New season goals and senior all-stars at quarterback. All right, here are the goals for the offseason. Acquire a right end with an overall of at least 85, a punter with at least 85, and a right outside linebacker with at least 85. Okay. And for the senior all-stars, we're able to scout quarterbacks. But remember, we're not picking until late in the second round. So we have to adjust our entire draft strategy around that. We're going to start out here at quarterback by scouting two quarterbacks that I hope would be available when we do select Walt Rogers, Eli McGee. We'll get more information on them. Receiver could be a tricky spot this year just because we're probably going to lose Coles. But we do have Roddy White, Harry Douglas. We'll start out here looking more in the 80s and then drop down for more of the receivers. But here's Dante Alens, 87 overall speed, elusiveness, and vision. I didn't do a lot of O-line scouting this year, so... I might just scout some of these late round picks and see if we can find a couple backups. I'm pretty happy with our O-line situation. Alright, let's see what scouting gave us here for quarterback information. Walt Rogers, 81 accuracy, 64 elusiveness. Nothing too special there. Eli McGee, only 71 accuracy, 43 awareness. At receiver, we have Dante Lenz, who has really good juke elusiveness. The catching is 74, not bad for right away. 45 spec catch, though. Tequel McBeth, 69 catching, 80 elusiveness, 65 spec catch. Is that SPC spec catch? I can't even remember if spec catch was in these older games. There's also James Pierce, who only had the 66 overall grade. 71 catching, 90 elusiveness. I want to see where the athleticism ends up for him, just because that's supposed to be a negative. But he has really good moves, so we'll see. I was pretty excited to scout Bob Cleveland, who's a fullback, whose top skills here show durability, speed, and strength. And he had 85 production grade. Ball carrier vision is low, and these are all fullback ratings, so... I was still interested in possibly him at running back. But a lot of uh, college running backs end up going the fullback route. Like um, Zach Line, for instance, ran for a lot of yards at SMU, and now he's been fullback for the Vikings and Saints. I also had a lot of interest here in Melvin Martin. The top three included learning with a plus three, acceleration, and speed, 75 production. And here were the senior bowl scouting grades, 69 man, 69 zone. So definitely a uh, fourth or fifth cornerback on the depth chart, but might be somebody we look for later on. Learning is obviously going to be a big deal when we're drafting so late and taking backups. I'm really interested here in left guard Casper Warfield, who has really good grades here across the board. 95 size, really good strength. Obviously, we want to get better as a rushing team, and I think that he could be a perfect addition for us. All right, if you wanted to add some speed here at quarterback, there are no quarterbacks that are really going to do that in this draft. Nobody ran under a 4-9. So adding somebody who might have a couple packages for them doesn't appear likely here in the draft, but we should still look at 
if there's anybody that could be a legit backup quarterback. All right, here at running back, blazing speed here for Mathis and Addis. We will definitely check on the top speedy backs. The top three ranked running backs are also the top three fastest running backs, so I don't know that we're going to be able to add any of them. There we go, James Orr. NFL comp is Darren Sproles. That would be perfect for what I'm looking for. We're also going to scout Victor Parker a bit more. One thing I'm finding too in this game is uh, one thing I don't really like looking at is undrafted free agents and filling roles with undrafted free agents because they end up with these big contract demands and it's tough to just get them, you know, like rookies drafted those cheaper four-year contracts. So I don't really see a lot of value in the undrafted free agents in this game because even the really good ones immediately want really good money and you're paying that for a player who has good potential but is still developing. So you can draft somebody with similar ratings, obviously, everybody's draftable, but get them for four years on those contracts. Like undrafted free agency to me in this game is almost unnecessary. So I think about players like Cornelius Snow and I don't necessarily wanna keep developing them because the contract won't match the role. And I need some time with these players at lower salaries. 4-2-3, that is pretty fast. Wonder how high Johnson is ranked. That would be number one at wide receiver. Speed, route running, elusiveness. Yeah, he's gonna be taken very early. Wow. Wow. I'm still gonna scout him. Skyler Cofield compared to Calvin Johnson. He has 95 speed, 99 jumping. He is 6'5", 230. I want Skyler Cofield on our team. I don't know if that's possible. All right, we contender restricted free agents now. Here we have backup corner Chevis Jackson. I might just give him a level one tender here. He'd be solid depth for under a million dollars. And if anybody wanted to give up a third round pick, I'd gladly take that pick. Now we have Harry Douglas, who is a restricted free agent. And I will not be going to level one. I'm thinking here we gotta go level three or four. I think I'll go with level three tender. All right, we now find ourselves with $10 million in salary cap space. I wonder if we need to look at maybe opening some up, but free agency is about to begin and we'll see what's possible here in free agency. I do wanna check out this mock draft first though and see what they're thinking for us. Obviously we don't pick till late in the second round, so definitely not getting any of these players. I do want to know where that receiver is going to go that has the Calvin Johnson comparison. There he is in the second round, Skyler Cofield, round two, pick 38. He's somebody I would be willing to trade up for. We have to see what's going to be possible here in the second round, but is there going to be anything more enticing than a possible trade up for a player like Cofield? What are they projecting for us though? Michael Greenlaw, right outside linebacker. I don't think I've really taken a look at him yet. We do have to add a good right outside linebacker in this class. He might be one overall under the goal if 84 is his true overall. Good athleticism, good pass rushing, so perhaps better fit at defensive end in our scheme, but I've done nothing to really scout him. For those that want us to consider releasing Matt Ryan, we would not be able to even try that. I imagine we wouldn't even be able to trade him. I'll put him on the trade block and see what happens there, but I have a feeling that we're not going to be able to make any moves there. We're going to move Torrance Gill to right end and we're going to give him number 97. 
The plan will be to have him and Anderson play a lot this season. At D tackle, obviously, Vince Wilfork was not a signing that's really worked out for us. And we've now drafted two defensive tackles that have potential to be the starters right now. And Wilfork, I wonder what we could do here to save salary. If we released him, we would pay 9.6 in penalties and save 11.9. It seems too early in this deal to try that. All right, so free agency is underway. Marcus McNeil is signed, and now look who's available. It's Randy Moss. Do we want to jump in on this bidding? I got to at least watch. Randy Moss at age 34. Obviously, this would just be too much for us at this stage. Two years, 17 million. We unfortunately can't make that happen. Tony Gonzalez is available. We're not going to be signing him. I love having Ben Watson on this team. Not going to sign Jason Witten either. Ray Lewis is available. I mean, we have so many Hall of Famers in this class right now. Thomas Howard at linebacker. I like our linebacker situation. I'm not sure I'm actually going to really address that position too aggressively. We got some players there that are developing. Gotta be patient. All right, you wanted to add a quarterback? How much of a difference could Matt Hasselbeck make? He's a 90 overall. Only two teams interested. We have 11 million in cap space. I have a minute. I don't know what to do. Do I want Matt Hasselbeck? I, I can't. No. I'm not signing Matt Hasselbeck right now. Let's go here to the free agent menu and see who's going to be out there. Best quarterback is Byron Leftwich, followed by Jason Campbell. I wonder if Jason Campbell wouldn't be a bad addition to the team. A lot of people thought Jason Campbell could have had a really good career. He still had a pretty solid career to my memory, but maybe never got the, the right chance he needed. If we can bring in a quarterback like Campbell for, say, $6 million or under, I would be very interested. There's also Kellen Clemens. Whoops, let me get back to the 80s. Kellen Clemens, what do we have here for some ratings? Solid accuracy and throw power. There's also Andre Woodson, who's 81 overall. He has 97 throw power, a lot lower accuracy. There's also Josh Johnson. So I have to think we can add somebody here that can push Matt Ryan. Terrell Suggs will be going to a new team. I wonder how much he will get. Waiting on a player that I want to try signing. All right, here we go. Jason Campbell, under six million would be my target. We'll have to see though. We're the only team interested, potentially. Do I have to go with that offer, though? The four-year contract? I want to go with, like, a one-year deal. So I don't know if I need to... make a bid here? And then just try to negotiate? Yeah, but it's going to be deals that line up with that. 26 over 4. Oh, he, he took that deal. I offered him the number one deal. And he took it. Now, it was expensive, but it has very little guaranteed money. We're paying a lot here for multiple years for Jason Campbell. I hope this works. Multiple years is not what I wanted, but I was okay with the money per year to at least offer the contract, and it came with, like, the lowest signing bonus and no incentives. Imagine Jason Campbell became our starter. We'd have him for, like, $7 million a season. But what are the chances that works out that way? If we check out some of the ratings here, he's two overall lower than Matt Ryan right now. He does have better throw power, better throw accuracy, and better awareness. So could Jason Campbell 
become our new starter. Also, Matt Ryan, that said 66 injury. That's a big deal. This could definitely shake up the series quite a bit. Could Jason Campbell be our quarterback of the future? Let's go number nine. Yeah, let's try that. We're still left with $5.8 million right now in cap space, and I'm not sure exactly how much we're going to need to field a roster this year. I only count 37 players on the roster, not including those players who have been tendered. I think they still have to sign their tender, and they're not counting towards the cap. So we got to open up some space like yesterday. What are the best ways for us to open up salary? Michael Turner, basically uncuttable. Darrell Revis. That would open up $6 million in space. I don't want to have to do that. Jamal Anderson. That would open up $8.32 million in penalties. The way I look at it right now, we pretty much have to trade Jamal Anderson. We don't have a lot of ways to open up salary, but this is one of the better ways without releasing one of our top players. I think with Torrance Gill, we'll have at least one solid pass rusher. Anderson last year, I know he had his moments. He's had some really good ones in this series, but he also took a big step back last year in overall production, and we need to uh, open up some salary somehow. No teams are currently interested in trading for Jamal Anderson. I'll see if anybody gives us an offer here, but I'm probably going to release him if we don't get one. All right, time has passed. We have no trade offers for Jamal Anderson. We are going to make the move and save some cap space here for the coming season. We still don't have a lot of room. I'm going to have to make some really small deals at some point. This is going to be tricky. Another player we could look to release is Michael Boley. We would have another $2 million in penalties, but it would make a little more room. We currently don't have a punter on the team, so we do need to add one. But I think quickly this is going to become too expensive for us. $1.5 million? We got to go less. We're getting through these pro days, by the way. I don't usually show a lot of this stuff because it's not like super interesting or anything. Just trying to get information on as many players that I think we could be interested in as possible. Alrighty, we're setting up our individual workouts now and this will give us every little bit of information about them. One of my favorite players here going through this process has been wide receiver. All the way down here, James Pierce, who now has an 80 overall grade. Before, it said 66, I'm pretty sure. I guess I don't need the extra 8% of information. We know he has good learning, explosiveness, 71 catching. That stuff will have to get better. The athleticism is okay, not great. But now I'm wondering if he ends up going a little earlier than expected. At least he's like number 10 or whatever at receiver there are a lot of receivers ranked higher than him that'll help push him down the board a bit one thing that is a concern though is what are we doing at edge rusher we're going to need to add a starter and i don't know if we can do that here in the draft we do have some info on michael greenlaw and we know his learning is low but I don't think that learning is like a huge deal breaker to me. He's currently mocked to us at a position of need, and I would like a little more information, his potential and some other things that would give us an idea if he would be a good second round pick for us. 88 potential is solid. Really good athlete, really solid pass rushing. So I think that we could end up going with Michael Greenlaw with our very first pick, especially because he's only 21 years old as well. I mean, here's the thing about learning being low. It'll just take them longer to learn the playbook, but eventually they're going to learn it. Potential? That's tougher to handle. If you don't have a high ceiling, then, you know, that speaks for itself. 
but learning you can overcome that with time. I'd also like to use one of our individual workouts here on Tyshawn Daniels. Now we know he has high learning, but we don't know his potential. Big playability is always a nice plus, 75 catching. Let's see what he's all about. Byron Leftwich's contract would have been a little bit easier to handle, but I'm happy with Jason Campbell. He's 29 years old as well, so a little bit younger. Coach, who would you like some more information on? I can't wait to see if Jason Campbell can be the quarterback that we needed. All right, Tyshawn Daniels, 82 learning, 84 potential. Excellent. With great athleticism, I think I'd have to rank him now over wide receiver James Pierce. I don't have all the info on Pierce, but I don't think there's anything that potential would show that would make me rank him higher. All right, we're going to spend our third individual workout now on running back Mickey Douglas. He's been compared to Kevin Fulk. He has solid speed, agility, and acceleration. And for his strengths as a player, big playability, quickness, and power. And after scouting him, 81 potential has been revealed. I really like the players that I've been focusing on so far. Even without a first round pick, this could become a very exciting draft class. With our next individual workout, we're going to scout Brad Tatum fully. We do need more tight ends on the roster. We only have one at the moment. 80 potential for Brad Tatum. All right, as a backup, that might be adequate enough. Good elusiveness, speed, not going to be a great blocker, but he has 72 catching, 86 speed. I think he'd be a great addition. I'm looking for a corner that fits our scheme defensively, and we're going to scout Nick McLean fully. We know he has low awareness. The ratings here are going to be very low. He's likely a late day three pick. He at least has some solid learning. Let's see if he has good potential to go with it. 82 potential isn't bad. I really like these players. I think we have a chance to have a great class. I wrote down a list of tight ends I'd be interested in signing, but right now I don't want to go anywhere near $3 million a season. I want to go very cheap and I have plenty of options. So we're not going to try signing Owen Daniels. We're closing in on the draft, everybody. Getting ready for what could be a really fun time. I'm excited for this one. I know we have no first round pick. I have an idea of what I want to do with the second round pick. But I'm mostly excited to get into the middle and late rounds and see if we can come away with some great value. I do have some interest here in Jermon Bushrod as we look to add some offensive line depth. This would be a two-year deal worth $1.3 million. I think that would be a perfect contract for us to get going here. Let's even uh, throw in a nice signing bonus. Here were the goals once again, and we have not accomplished them. We now have to look at finding a sleeper. I think that shows up every year. Avoid a bust. We don't have a first round pick, so I don't see us failing that one. Oh, first two rounds. Well, then we'll see. What is this? Game Changer Coaching Retreat. Your staff have all gained skill points. I don't even know what happened exactly. All my coaches just got better. I can't remember where everybody was, but here are the points we have right now we'll look to spend when the new season opens up. With Harley Jean Charles, I think I'm going to hold out for 20K and then go ahead and get that really good special skill that makes everything discounted. That just takes 20K and um, I think it'll be worth it in the long run. Well, we didn't do a whole lot in free agency. Four additions to 26 losses. We now have a 39-man roster and only $7 million in salary cap space. How am I going to fix that problem? I need to field an entire roster, and I have to add another 14 players at an average cost of half million dollars a salary cap. That might be impossible. We actually only added two players. I'm not sure why it's showing Daquan Charles and D'Angelo Williams here because I didn't extend offers to them. 
I did sign Bushrod and Campbell. Here are the players, though, that... We didn't lose all these players. Not everybody here was on our team. Some of these players, I checked on their contracts. But uh, Cornelius Snow is gone now. He goes to the Eagles. Yeah, I think he got, what, $9 million, five years. Like, it was just more than I wanted to pay. Terrell Suggs goes to the Packers. We've made it, everybody! Draft day has arrived! And we're going to complete the entire offseason here. Hopefully, this can all fit into one episode. But let's start the draft now. We do not pick in the first round, so I don't think we'll spend a lot of time here in the opening picks. There are a few players I would like to see where they end up, but the Jacksonville Jaguars are on the clock. They were founded in 1995, they've never won a Super Bowl, and now they're drafting a player number one to try and change that. Coming off a 3-13 campaign, the Jacksonville Jaguars go with a left tackle here with their very first selection. At number two, Detroit went with tight end Damian Portis. Interesting selection there very early. Next up, safety goes to the Jets, Anthony Minter, 6'4", 220 pounds. I'm waiting on when these receivers go because it's such a good receiver class. First quarterback, Jason Huff, goes to San Francisco. Wide receiver to Baltimore. Sindrick Johnson from Cal. Another quarterback off the board, Jared Sunquist to Seattle. First running back in the top 10, Minnesota. Don't you have Adrian Peterson? Tenard Mathis from Eastern Carolina. All right, what are they going to do with Peterson? Cofield just went the previous pick before the first round came to an end. Cofield was the really, really good receiver with that Megatron comparison. The second round mock draft never made a lot of sense to me, so I'm not surprised he ends up going a bit earlier. A lens here. He's off the board now, so less receiver options for the second round. I wasn't really counting on them being there, but I was still keeping track. But it's time to get to the second round action, and hopefully we can see someone fall to our spot and maybe it's that linebacker that we were mocked we'll have to see if he's still there this does not seem like a draft where i want to be moving up a lot because i like the depth and i don't have all my picks to begin with so i want to stay put right now and hopefully make a solid selection in the 50s so far so good i believe and now we can see our team as Greenlaw is selected. Okay, a few picks before us. So my favorite receivers aren't out there. The top linebacker, pass rusher, isn't out there. So now we're on the clock. Of the suggestion is Jared Klesko from Oregon. NFL comparison, unscouted. Good learning. Don't know his potential. Might be a good pass rusher. Might even be our pick. Like but I have to, to take a, a look and I have a handful of minutes here to make a selection. Klesko is strong. Doesn't have great speed. Might not be a bad pick. He's 24 years old though. Let's see what else we could do. There's Macbeth here. We didn't fully scout him. Brock Foster has good learning. Better athletes. And he's also a pass rusher here. We just don't know really how good of a pass rusher he'll be right away. Melvin Martin, the corner, has solid learning. 23 years old. Too early to take a cornerback right now, I think. We're going to go with Brock Foster here in the second round. We have to add a pass rusher. Foster had a very similar grade to Klesko, but Foster is three years younger. We don't know the potential on either player. So i just like to go for the younger player, who I know has good learning, he's a better athlete, and hopefully he can help us out on day one because our defense is going to need it. Welcome Brock Foster to Atlanta. Here is our first pick of the newest season at 61 overall. Our next pick is at 93, and then 100. 
And I'm really excited about those two spots for us. So hopefully everything goes well between now and then. Obviously it changes days here. We're going on to the next day of the draft. All righty, on to the third round now. And we're hoping that a receiver is available for maybe our next pick or at pick 100. James Pierce, Tyshawn Daniels are the two players I really like there. And I expect Daniels will definitely be there. I'm not sure about Pierce, but I think I like Daniels a bit more. Klesko ends up going here to Baltimore in the third round. Not seeing anybody go that I really wanted, so I think this is playing out nicely for us. We're on the clock here very shortly. Not interested in trading up, no thank you, and here we are. Suggestion, Wayne Rogers. We don't know his potential, his learning. No, we have other receivers that we like. Now we could go with Brad Tatum here, who is the top ranked tight end available, and I do like him. Might be able to come back for wide receiver, and there are still some other players that I like. I do want to take a look though at the trade downs while I have a few minutes to do that. And we would be moving down from 93. I don't think a 7th round pick in the future is worth it there. 115 is a bit far for just a 6 and a 7. 2 future 4s is not that great. The clock pauses here, that's nice. So if I go with the Jets offer here, 99 is not too far to fall but I would like to see if I could get more. You think that's good enough? Are you kidding me? We're done here. I do like James Pierce a lot. Not sure about his potential, and he's not my number one receiver available. I have to go all the way down for Tyshawn Daniels, and I really like him. I know I also have a lot of interest in cornerback Nick McLean, who's a 61 overall grade player. I think he'll be there in a little bit as well. At running back, there was Douglas, who is a 66. So a lot of offensive players I like in this range, and we couldn't address these spots in free agency. So here's our chance. How do we do it? Do we go tight end first? Do we wait on running back? I think right here, we're going to go tight end Brad Tatum. We use two tight ends a lot in the offense. And Tatum would be able to step in, I think, right away. Learn the playbook quickly. He has really good speed. I know he can't do a lot of blocking, but I want him for his receiving skills. So welcome Brad Tatum to the Atlanta Falcons. James Pierce went right after that to Kansas City. That's okay. We're picking again here at 100. More receivers being taken. And we're on the clock again, suggesting we take I suggest Johnny we Hall. Game. No thanks. What do we do now? I'm really tempted to go get the receiver I like a lot because we don't pick again until 125. And I don't like, you know, hoping that players are still there. If I fall, it's going to have to be for... Only a handful of picks, really. The Chargers pick is somewhat intriguing. 15 spots to me isn't like super risky, but they'd have to increase their offer and they're not going to. This could be a little bit of a reach, but I go get the players that I want. Tyshawn Daniels is going to be our selection. Remember, big playability. Learning, size, potential. He's a great receiver prospect. He's only 22 years old. He's six foot three. And he is the newest member of the Atlanta Falcons. Ah, Holloway just went to Buffalo. He was another one I liked a lot. Can't get everybody. We pick again at 125. We'll see who is still going to be there. I think Mickey Douglas could be our next selection. We'll just have to see if anybody else wants to take the Clemson running back. Detroit takes a running back, but not Douglas. And we are back on the clock. 
And by the way, this game is really slowing down. I may have to reset it quick. All right, let's continue this draft now. We are in the fourth round, pick, pick 125. Here. Jamel Norton is the suggested player. Don't really have a lot of information on him. Let's see what else we can do. I know They'd I like talked about going pick. running back here, and that may be what we end up doing. Although one of my favorite players available is William Stone. 76 potential is a little bit low. He'd basically be a backup with very little upside beyond that. So I don't know about this round in that case. Right now, I can't pass on the upside with Mickey Douglas, who could have a role in season one, potentially. Douglas is our newest player. We've now added three skill players on offense in this draft. We had to get more explosive. I think we've done that. We've added a quarterback in Jason Campbell, and we have added a defensive end to replace Jamal Anderson. So now I think most of what we're going to do is just add depth to the team. William Stone is now off the board. He would have been our next selection. I still might have to look at drafting an offensive lineman potentially, but we have a big gap here in our selections. I didn't realize how wide that gap was. Okay, 189, we're back on the clock. Hey, the fans like the pick of Douglas. Running back Mickey Douglas, 89% yes. I wish I would have checked that for the other picks. Forgot about that. I have two corners I like a lot, but I don't have all the information on Kerry Robinson. I do have the information on Nick McLean, 82 potential. That's hard to pass on, but Robinson does have 70 man coverage right away, 76 learning compared to Charles Tillman. Neither are phenomenal athletes at corner. Do we just go with McLean here because the potential is more of a sure thing? I think that's the smart move for us. Just add some solid depth here. We don't need to uh, necessarily go for a little more upside with somebody who's going to be our fourth cornerback. And now we have two seventh round picks that are pretty close to one another. Kerry Robinson is still available if I wanted to double up at the position, which wouldn't be a bad idea. We're going to go with Kerry Robinson here. We have a couple seventh round picks, so let's go for another player that I think will be solid and add good depth. And we're right this back on the clock here. again. We don't have a punter yet on the team, so we could look at drafting one here. How about Derek Lockett from Harvard to end our draft? That is how it ends. What did you think of that draft, that offseason? Obviously, I had some goals, and I didn't work very hard at fulfilling them. I feel that the approval's high enough, we win enough. I don't have to go for all these goals anymore. I stopped doing that a little bit last year. I'm kind of going my own way now with what I want to do, and the winning will take care of any negatives, as long as we win. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned that I don't really like going for undrafted rookies in here because they end up becoming really expensive to keep around. What that really means is that going for the best undrafted free agents isn't the best idea because you'll immediately be forced to sign them to deals that you would want to sign to veterans instead. You don't get a few years of cheap rookie deal money with undrafteds in this game. So you're really better off going for lower ranked players that are maybe just filling out the bottom of the roster, but maybe not necessarily the best. There are examples in this series, I think Daquan Charles, Cornelius Snow, there have been some undrafteds where I've had to like look at re-signing them immediately, and I think I, I've done it once or twice, but it showed me that, wait a minute here, you don't get to, you know, to develop them for three or four years before giving that contract. They're not getting something massive, but they're still getting a few million a year, which is more than the vast majority of draft picks will make per season. This could potentially, though, be a great way for us to fill out a few spots on the roster for really cheap while we look for other veterans that we can add. So I don't want to go too high for these undrafted players. I want to stay under like 400k, I think, per player. 
These are getting pretty competitive, actually. We do sign our first undrafted player, McLaughlin here, a right guard. Hilton hopefully will sign, but that's going to take a couple minutes. All right, we're on the road to training camp now. Before that, we just have to take care of our rookie contracts, and then I'm pretty sure we'll end this episode. But it's been a fun offseason. I mean, I knew there was a lot of uncertainty going into it. I wish there were more ways we could have created some cap space, but I like the addition of Jason Campbell. I like that we were able to add some playmakers on offense that can help us out. And we made some additions to our coaching staff that should pay off for us going forward. So we have a lot to figure out now with a new season getting underway. But hopefully here we can just uh, maybe see some ratings here for our rookies. That'd be nice. I know a lot of them I had fully scouted already. At least this year with no first round pick, we don't have a really big contract to uh, give out for any rookies. Late second round picks, I mean, we're under a million dollars a year. All right, we've made it to the preseason. There's one contract that didn't show up yet for some reason. I don't think I missed it, but Tyshawn Daniels' contract never popped up for me to negotiate. So I don't see him on the roster yet. I guess for a training camp invite, we brought in Jamar Johnson, Sean Mingo. We'll have to go through preseason next time and see who ends up making the roster and then if we can make uh, any more moves. Is there anything else we should do before week one? I'm excited to see our new rookies hopefully get some roles on this team. I think Brock Foster is going to start right away. Hopefully he's somewhere near that 81 overall, but we don't know most of his ratings yet. All right, that's going to do it for this one, everybody. That was a jam-packed offseason. Not sure if that's going to be one or two episodes. I've been here recording for around four hours, so I have no idea. My recording sessions don't usually go this long. But that is going to do it for the offseason, everybody. I'm happy with how it went, but what do you think? And are the decisions I made enough to get us on the right track towards going to the Super Bowl and having a more consistent regular season? For sure, 9-7 and seven should not happen again. I want to go further. Thank you all for watching. Please leave your feedback, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.